Hello everyone, I'm Reza Riot from Radicad and today in this video I'm going to talk about what is calculated column and measures, what is their differences, in which scenario you have to use which, the mysterious question of calculated column versus measure in DAX or Power BI, that's what I'm going to explain today. Let's see how it works. I'm going to show you how these are different with uh, some examples. Um, in the modeling tab of Power BI, if you use to do any calculations, you know that under modeling tab, we have three types of calculation, a table, a column, and a measure. We are going to talk about uh, the column and the measure and their differences. Uh, this is a very simple model I used uh, and I've created based on AdventureWorks dataset, which you can find it under my blog, post link down below this video and uh, this is the model i have a sales table and i have customer date and product dimensions so i'm going to talk about what is first calculated column then we'll talk about what is a measure and their differences uh, one of the first thing you need to know is that power bi by default when you use import mode is loading data into the memory uh, when I go to uh, data tab, uh, here I'll see uh, the actual data rows in this table uh, and any other tables, I can see that. Um, and if there's any columns, any values, I'll see all of them. So let's now talk about the column. I'll start with creating a new column. In this uh, scenario, we have the sales amount in every row. I'm trying to find it where it is. Uh, the sales amount in every row and the cost. So what I'm going to do is in every row, I would say sales amount minus uh, total product cost. You see a lot of repeated values here because that's how our data set is shaped, uh, sample data set, uh, but the principle is the same. So I'm going to create a new column and I'm going to call this column, just making it bigger, so you can see it as well. I'm calling this column margin and margin is equal to sales amount minus total product cost, right? Uh, as soon as I press enter, the expression will be evaluated. The result of that will be uh, evaluated for every single row. You see, this is the result for every single row, uh, sales minus cost and the value would be visible here. If I scroll down, I'll see also other values as well. We have a lot of repeated values in this sample data set but you see that it is working, right? So for every row, this calculates it. That's one of the main things you need to know first. Calculated column runs on every single row. It's a row by row calculation basis. Uh, we also call it row context. Uh, there are some exceptions and details about that, but mm, by default, a calculated column runs on a row by row basis. Now, this result will be stored somewhere because this is an in-memory technology, so it is stored in the memory. Every new column that you add in Power BI will be stored in the memory. Now, imagine if you have a table and you add like 200 columns to that, calculated columns, you are adding the memory consumed in Power BI in memory storage. Now, the memory is not like, for example, if this is 60,000 rows, it's not like 60,000 unique values. So the memory usage would be uh, different than a normal, let's say, disk space, space usage. But uh, at the end of the day, even after all compressions and things like that, you still get a memory part of memory consumed. When this value is refreshed, the value is refreshed whenever you hit the refresh button. So the, uh, it first uh, refresh, it first evaluate when you create this column. Then from that time, after that time, whenever you click on this refresh, or if you put this model up in the cloud and schedule it to refresh, that is the time that this evaluation happens again. So it evaluates at the refresh time. This is pre-calculated. It is important to know that these values are pre-calculated. They are not dynamic. So that's calculated column. Now, Comparing it to measure, measure is totally different things. A calculated column returns one value per row. As you see, this returns one value per row. Measure, although it is written with the same expression language, uh, it's totally different in the way that it works. So I'll go and create a new measure. We'll see how it works. 
So I'll create a new measure and I call this measure sales. Now, when I start typing sales amount, I don't really see sales amount value here. Uh, and if you worked with DAX, you know that the IntelliSense is quite smart. If it doesn't show you something, that means you cannot use it there. Now, the reason that it doesn't show me the value is that in a measure, you should have, you should return one single value, one single value only. A measure does not return one value per row because there is no row beside it, right? A measure returns one single value. That's the column that should return one single value per row. This uh, measure is just one single value. Now, in the sales amount uh, column, which is part of this table, I have like 60,000 different values because my table has 60,000 rows. When I say sales amount column, it doesn't really know which value I want, and that is why it doesn't show me that. Uh, in, when we use measures, we use usually aggregations. The reason for that is that we want to end up with one single value. These aggregations can be sum, minimum, average, maximum, or putting a filter, then calculating something from that filter to end up with one single value. Now, let's say I use this one. I say sum of sales amount. That's my measure, right? And when I put the sum, then you'll see the sales amount comes up because it knows that this will return only one single value. So that's the difference in terms of writing the DAX logic for that. Um, I'll press enter. Uh, another difference between measure and calculated column is that you won't be able to see the measure value in the data tab. You see, I'm in the data tab. I scroll all the way to the right. I can see the measure in the list of my columns, but I cannot see the measure in here. There is no place here that shows me the measure. There is no place that I can see the data of this measure. Why? Because the measure is not evaluated yet. Writing the logic of the measure doesn't mean that it is evaluated. The only way to evaluate the result of a measure is to put it in a report. That is the only way that you get the result of a measure. Measures are, are calculated on a fly. Measures are not calcul are not pre-calculated. That is one of the big differences between measure and the calculated column. You see that calculated column is pre-calculated, right? I've got those margins pre-calculated. All of them are there. Measures, however, uh, the expression is there, but it's not calculated. So if I want this to be evaluated or calculated or whatever, I have to go to a report page and I have to put that measure somewhere in my report page. Let's say I bring it in a table visual. At the moment that I put it in the report, I just make it bigger. At that point of the time, this will start calculating it, right? So it is, you see that it's like $29 million, the total sales value, right? but it calculates it right at the time that I put it in the report. You see it it's super fast. The, re the reason is that the calculation I wrote it was a really simple calculation. The data is in memory. The measure calculation itself happens in part of the CPU, which is uh, processing the uh, logic of DAX. Now, measures are not consuming memory by default. There are some measures that does temporary. Uh, we are not talking about those. Measures in general don't uh, consume memory uh, uh, unless we use iterators and things like that. Measures, however, consume CPU because the time that you put it in the report page, instantly at that time, it starts calculating it. Now, if you have a column chart somewhere here, if you have a filter slicer, clicking on any of those will re-evaluate re this calculation and the calculation will be done again and again. Uh, now, you can imagine that if you have this in a table, let's say I bring something from the customer table, education, and I move education up, okay? So you can see that in this example here, I have the calculation done six times, not five times, six times, because this last time is also a calculation when there is nothing filtered. Uh, every one of those is a calculation when something is filtered, right? So six times calculation. If I put a measure in a table with like 20,000 rows, and if I have also not only one single measure, 20 measures showing in a matrix, that's usually what uh, some people do, 
And if the measure calculation is uh, complex, then I will see a lot of these rounding circles on top of my visuals that are thinking, thinking, thinking. You'll see the CPU consumptions of your machine is up to 100% to do all those calculations. After doing all those calculations, it comes down. So measures are dynamic calculations. Measures are not pre-calculated. Measures are calculated on a fly. Now you might think that, okay, why do I need a calculation on a fly? Why, uh, why I'm not using a calculated column? The fact is that in a lot of scenarios, you are using calculation on a fly because here, for example, you want to see the calculation of the total sales for high school, right? This calculated that on a fly with just like that. Now you might say, okay, I could have achieved that. I, I could have achieved that with just normal sales amount, right? We can put that there, uh, and you'll see that it's exactly the same thing, bringing the normal sales amount column or the measure that we have created. The reason is that Power BI automatically behind the scene create this measure for you. That sum icon that you'll see there is actually uh, a measure. You don't really see the definition of that measure. You don't see the DAX expression, but behind the scene, that is a measure. When you drag it and bring it into your report, that's the measure showing the value here. Uh, we call it implicit measure, uh, but let's leave that for another video. Implicit measure and explicit measure, what is their differences? Uh, let's put that aside. At the end of the day, these both are measures when you bring it that way. So measures are quite critical part of Power BI. On the other hand side, measures can give you some stuff which are very dynamic. Like for example, let's say I want to calculate year to date. Year to date calculation can be totally different, depends on what, what customer, what product, what date and things like that. This is a dynamic calculation. If you want to do that calculation in calculated column, that's fine. Uh, you have to spend a lot of, let's say, uh, expressions to do that. Uh, and it would be pre-calculated, it won't be dynamic. You can do that in Power Query, same problems. But the best place for doing that kind of things is a measure. Right. Let me show you uh, an example of that uh, year to date, for example. I'll create a table here with a full date value. And I will have a calculation for a measure for year to date. Now, writing this measure of year to date, you can learn about it in another video I've created about uh, year to date. Um, so I'm not going to explain how it is working here. I'm just using it. So sales year to date is total year to date calculation of the sum of sales amount, sales amount for the full date alternate key dot date, right? As I said, I'm not going to explain how the expression is. Imagine this is a measure with that expression. And now I'm bringing that over here in this alongside with the normal sales amount to just show you how it works beautifully beside that. So here you can see the output. You see that I have every single day, the sales of that day, and this is year to date. For every single day, it shows me that uh, sales from all dates before that, from the start of the year to that particular day. And the good thing about this, or having it as a measure, is that it's dynamic. If I remove day, let's say I don't really need day in this visual, I remove it, all of the calculations dynamically re-evaluated re for the month. Now this is monthly. You see that, for example, in uh, August, this value is July and August together. In September, these are addition of all of these. It goes all the way to December. In January, it restarts because it's year to date. Right. So a measure is uh, uh, dynamic in its nature. Calculated column is not. Because calculated column is pre-calculated, most of the times we use actually that to, um, to do the... Uh, uh, we, we actually use Power Query to do the calculation instead of doing it in DAX, which is a totally different subject when to use M or Power Query and when to use DAX. So in general, these are the differences. Uh, it's also in my blog article in our website as well. Measure is not stored in memory. Calculated column is stored in memory. Calculated column is pre-calculated. Measure is not. Uh, calculated column consumes memory. 
uh, measure consumed CPU. Um, calculated column usually used on a row by row calculation basis, calculating margin and things like that. Measure is mainly for aggregations, returning one single value. You will see the result of a measure when you put it in a report. For calculated column, you won't see that. You will see that in the column uh, in the data tab as well. Uh, and uh, for most of the time, when you are using a calculated column, you can do that in Power Query, but for measures, probably not. Uh, and you have seen some examples of calculated column versus measure. So here you go. This is um, how you compare calculated column with a measure. Uh, if you like to know more about Power BI, go ahead and subscribe to your video uh, YouTube channel and learn more about Power BI and AI. And if you have any questions, put them down below. Thanks.